on because you're my very first guest on the Freedom okay. Farm show. Yay! <laughs> Let's have fun. And, uh, you know, the, I actually found you through, um, I think I saw a story on you. Um, is it EWN Network? EWTN, or? yeah. The yeah. Captain New Show. They they had us on, which was really nice of them. Yeah. So, of course, I had to order your coffee. And, and just uh, a quick intro to our our viewers out there. Anton Kresik is on with us today and he is the founder of seven weeks coffee. And I have, I have some bags with me here. Oh, thank you. Delicious. (laughs) These are my two favorite blends, the hope Hope blend and the life blend. Love it. Yeah. It's our new blend line. That's been popular. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we, that's our newer line. It's, it's um, really good quality coffee. Um, We show it one more time to everybody. Yeah. mm -hmm affordable. It's a, it's a kind of like a all purpose coffee. It's a, I call it the breakfast coffee too. It's really good for breakfast. <laughs> and it's delicious. I'm a, I'm a big coffee nut. So, uh, I've, I've, I'm sick of Starbucks. So mm-hmm. and what they stand for. So when I found you guys, I'm like, Oh, not only does it align with what we believe, but it, it tastes mm-hmm. great too. So Awesome, Anton. Um, so I went on your website, and one thing that stood out to me right away, I love this quote that you have. It says, Billy Graham famously said, the next move of God would be believers making a difference in the marketplace. Uh, tell everyone a little bit about Seven Weeks Coffee and how it's making that difference in the marketplace. Yeah, I thanks for first having me on, and um, that's a I, I love that quote. I don't know, I think I heard it just for like an old YouTube clip of Billy Graham, and it's it's just this idea of like sometimes as believers we can just think our our corridor is just staying within the church, you know, the church walls. When a when a big part of it is to to be out in the community and in the public and 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 in the marketplaces, right? Like, wouldn't it be awesome if you know? the CEO of Amazon was a strong believer. Like, I think those are good things to have leaders of industry um, to be believers. And um, so that kind of inspired me in a sense to, to take a leap of faith and start my own company, um, which is now seven weeks coffee, a pro-life coffee company with a simple mission, donate 10% of every sale to pregnancy care centers across the nation. So um, that's what we do. And um we we look to to not just provide you know a good mission but a quality product as well. And like you said, you, I'm happy to hear you've been enjoying the coffee because that's important. We have to, as believers in the marketplace, match quality with mission. Absolutely, and and tell us a little bit about your background because I know coffee wasn't the main thing years ago. You really mm-hmm. were a big sports. You're you're an athlete. I, I, so yeah, I mean, um, I grew up playing golf. I played competitive golf my, my whole life, um, middle school, high school, division one golf and college. I played D one golf, division one golf, and I was going to try to play professionally, but I ended up hurting my back and pivoted my life. That's how I ended up in DC and getting involved in politics. But yeah, my background is definitely, uh, sports oriented. So, um, a lot of life lessons from sports that transition into business um mm-hmm. that I've taken with me that you don't realize that come back. Absolutely. So what was that pivotal moment? What happened in your sports life that mm-hmm. and, and how did you end up in DC and politics? Was it something that you always wanted to do? Yeah. So I've always loved politics. Like I loved just um being around it, uh just being involved. I've always cared about it. And and actually the pro-life issue is something I really cared about too. Um so it's that's kind of my involvement with it from that sense. Um played college golf, I ended up hurting my neck and my back when I was playing golf and I played through pain my entire senior year. This is in 2019, and I said, I've had it. I can't play anymore. I need to do something else. <laughs> and it's kind of it's kind of crazy because my whole life was devoted to golf. So it wasn't much like I had actually, you know, skill sets and I didn't do internships because I played tournaments all the time. And so what I what I knew I liked though was was politics. So I looked up internships in DC and that's when I moved down here. So that was the fall of 2019. And then I'm sure once you got into politics, you were like, uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's a funny experience. I think you um one, I thought you'd you know get involved, meet a bunch of people, be a part of the conservative movement, and um, really make an impact and change. And you kind of see it, and you say it's really hard to, to, to um, you know, be be someone per se, or and try to make a difference politically because it's just a really 
um, you know, there's kind of like money drives both sides of the aisle from Republicans and Democrats. And uh, I think uh, it was naive of me to think like we're right on all the issues or like we're the we act, you know, correctly or have the right beliefs on things, because there's a lot of times where you see things. It's like, yeah, maybe there are people just in the political conservative movement in it for the money or something like that nature. So um kind of like a life lesson in a sense that um we're not we're not called to you know what to we can't change you know everything on our own but we can do our little part in and i think that's what you know god has for for everyone to do their part and um yeah i i think it's change the world is is kind of a naive thing to think and um but yeah our you can always do your little part and um i think that's what really counts and you certainly are. I feel like through your coffee company, mm-hmm. you're influencing the political and, you know, spreading the the good news with, with, with the world out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it, that's exactly yeah. right. It's like we, we're not, I, Seven Leaves Coffee has its defined mission. And I think that's important to define its mission. Like if we can sell coffee to support a pregnancy center, that that's a, that's a win. And um, I think there's, there's power in this, the, the clarity of that. I don't want to be ambiguous and say, we're going to, you know, or, you know, we're going to end abortion ourselves. Like that's, right. we can't do that as a coffee company. There's a lot of things like we, we're to be too vague and uh, generalized, I think is a detriment, but like, yeah, we're going to sell coffee to support life-saving services at pregnancy centers. And I think um, if we can do that, people will care. Absolutely. And, and tell us the, you know, the, the creation of the name of the co- seven weeks coffee and, and the significance of what, of what that means with the bean. Yeah. Thanks. That's the best part. So I love that. I had the idea for a pro-life coffee company, but I didn't know what to name it. And so my wife luckily uh, had a great idea. She asked me, when is a baby the size of a coffee bean? Cause often an expecting mother calls it my little bean. I'm like, Oh, let me look it up. So at seven weeks, a baby is the size of a coffee bean. It's the same time a heartbeat is detected in an ultrasound. So that's why the heartbeat is in our logo. It's like, we want to help support ultrasound services at pregnancy care centers. So that's where the name and, and the heartbeat kind of comes into to play, but that's how we get our name. That's brilliant. Brilliant. And, and, you know, one of the other things I was thinking as I was looking through your website, I feel like a lot of Christians today are fearful to, um, you know, speak up and use their voices and share their opinions in this crazy world we live in today. Mm-hmm. Um, but perhaps what what I always, you know, learning your story and what you're doing can inspire people to walk more <laughs> boldly in their faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what advice do you have for them? Yeah, I think it goes back to just doing the small things well. Like when we mm-hmm. started for a pro life coffee company, um, the biggest thing like we try to focus on is like, can we deliver you know one product well to our customers and provide a good quality product? And I think that's just that's that that idea and mindset. Can I do the little things well? And I think it it parallels into you know speaking up and like we we all have a platform whether large or small it is that we can speak into and, and to do that well is important. And so. Um, you, it's not about having the biggest reach or the loudest voice, but if you can speak into the, you know, the hearts and minds of your coworkers, your, you know, people, you know, maybe you're in college and, you know, you have someone you can really speak into or, or, or be bold for your faith in that environment. There's always little opportunities and doing those things well is the most important part. Absolutely. And what advice do you have for small business owners out there that are just trying to get their mm-hmm. product out? I know, I know it's, it's not easy. Running yeah, it's farm, difficult. I know, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, it's funny. You look back and you you see all the little things over time that kind of add up, but it it actually kind of correlates to just do one thing right. Like, and it takes time. It's like expecting the long run to pay off. Like your your actual growth of a company, like you'll probably grow more and you know the tail end more than it you did in the first you know you know, two years growing because it just takes so long to, to really establish a brand and just to know that that's part of it. Like that's part of the journey. Um, but have, have what you do, um, clear and do it well. So like, again, said for us, like we didn't have the fanciest website. Like, I think we have a nice website now. It looks professional, but when we first started, it wasn't, it wasn't great. Like it was okay, but a customer can order a bag of coffee and, uh, we delivered it to them and in, in a, in, you know, a pretty quick timing. And that was important. And we only mm-hmm. had two options back then, a medium and dark rose. So now we have, you know, wow, like 10 options or I think so. Wow. We have uh yeah, light, medium, dark, espresso, decaf, 
Um, and then the blend lines. So that's, you know, that's eight. Then we have merchandise now. Um, so we have a lot actually more than that. Um, so we have clothing, apparel, things of that nature, but none of that was even like in the cards when we first started, you kind of just learn as you grow. But I think if we try to do too much at once at the beginning, you just fail at everything. So mm-hmm. it's important to do one thing well. So that's how it started. Just kind of like, how did yeah. you get the word out there in the beginning? I was luckily, luckily I had a few articles written right when we launched. So I just, through some mutual friends, was grateful to have a couple publications share our story as we, as we launched. But um, you got to get really creative, like Mm -hmm. literally sending your website to everyone, you know, you're sharing it to everyone, you know, um, trying to drive, you know, um, from, from friends and family to get something written about it. Um, you kind of just got to be super creative because there's no, um, you know, sure formula. It's just persistence. <laughs> but what I love is that, uh, I heard you in an interview say when you first started starting this, um, you went online and there were no coffee companies that, <laughs> mm-hmm. that did this. Yeah. So that's, that's yeah. when I had the idea. So yeah you know, there's a lot of missional based coffee companies. Um, and I was like, just researching, that. I was like, yeah, there's a ton of missional based coffee companies around ideas, values, whatever it may be. And so I literally one day Googled pro-life coffee and there was truly like nothing there. There's a couple small, like boutique local stuff, but like there was nothing on a national level, like saying like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to market into this industry. But, but for me, it wasn't just like, we want to do one. We branded pro-life. Like, I think you can do that. And that's fine, but doesn't really make you pro-life if you just say it. What makes you right. pro-life for us, and we say, is by having a tangible impact supporting life-saving services at pregnancy care centers. So we wanted to make it like it's we're pro-life because we're we're giving back, we're leading with our tithe, and that was the important part. It's like we want to be missional first, and that's why we're pro-life. So um, I think that's what's also led to the growth of our company is that we're we're literally, um, you know, giving back just a large portion of every sale um, to pregnancy centers. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but the the product is delicious. Can you tell us a little bit about where your coffee comes from and yeah. how you source it? Yeah. So that was, that's the other part of it. It's like, yeah, and especially the Christian realm, like we can have a great mission, but can we match it with product? And I, I actually didn't know a ton about coffee when I started this. I love coffee. I drink it every day. And I always <clears throat> wanted good coffee, but I learned a ton about sourcing quality, roasting, all of that through, you know, over the last year and a half. But I knew I wanted to serve a good product because it was important to have people buy it first because of the mission. Like that's what's going to probably get them to buy it. And then they're going to come back hopefully because of the coffee. So that was the balance we wanted to strike. So we ended up working with an amazing roaster who does all direct trade sourcing. This means he's directly working with the farmers and buying the coffee from them. It's the most transparent way to source coffee in the world. Um, Coffee is a very corrupt um, it has often slave labor, child labor involved with it. Wow. Fair trade is, is not even a good standard for what, um, of how to treat farmers. It's, it's truly a poverty wages essentially. Um, so you don't want fair trade coffee, you want direct trade. It means we're directly paying the farmers and we're paying up to 300 times what fair 300% more than what fair trade requires. Um, wow. yeah. So it's important to sort. So I, I learned all that and I'm happy we get to say like, that's our coffee. Cause now we're like, get to advertise. We're pro abundantly. We're pro abundant life. We're directly helping the farmers um, who are growing the crops to the moms, you know, at the pregnancy centers Um, and coffee. This is cool for your audience to know it's the second largest commodity in the world traded. So you have a huge, you know, vast, you know, coffee economy of oil is number one and then coffee is number two. So it's important that we're ethically sourcing this product. Um, And so that's a big part of it. So we have an amazing ethically sourced product, organically farmed um, specialty roast coffee. It's like top one to 2% of the beans of the world. So um, that's, and that matters. People care, you know, what they're drinking. So we get to provide a really good product. Awesome, Anton. Um, I have a couple more questions. Sure. Um, Oh, let's see. How how has the feedback been? Like, I'm sure you've met so many interesting people in, in politics mm-hmm. and in this realm. How how has the feedback been? And have you gotten any like negative people <laughs> reach out to you? Sure, I've definitely had a few of the hate messages, which <laughs> that's fine. I think it's funny because you got to assume it's going to happen. But obviously, the overwhelming feedback has been amazingly positive. We've met 
some incredible people in the pro-life movement, the conservative movement. And it's just been really cool to see the, uh, you know, adoption to the product and the mission. Um, and hopefully we can just stay true to that. Um, but it's been cool to see kind of where God has led it and where he's yeah. continuing to take the it, business. It, it's really taken off. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and I you just started it like a year ago, right? Yeah. So it's really 2022 was our first year. So I had the idea in fall of 21. So then mm -hmm. we, kind of opened our doors like November of 21, but 2022 was our first year. And, and the majority of the growth happened over the last, you know, four or five months, um, which has been awesome. And yeah, I had, it's, you, you have to hold things loosely because where you originally view things or how things should grow, it tend, tends to never happen that way. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's a good tip too. It's like, hold things loosely. Don't, don't make decisions um, unless you have to. I think there's a lot of like overthinking that happens in small businesses where you can feel, you know, like you have to act now for a certain decision when a lot of times you can just wait and see how things play out. So I've learned that lesson too. <laughs> Smart. Let, let God handle it. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Give it, give it to him. <laughs> um, and then one last question. This is the Freedom Farm Show and we, we love freedom here. Uh, what does the word freedom mean to you? I think I've really experienced that word since I um, started this business. Um, it's this this concept and it, it's very uncommon in the rest of the world, but into the United States, freedom means like we have the ability to create and produce our thoughts into action with no one um, you know, being in the way. And that's powerful. I think people don't realize what they have, you know, here in the United States and freedom is a very sacred, um, you know, just gift that we have. Like we have the ability to have thoughts, have ideas and produce it into action. And there's, there's no one in the way that's, you know, there to stop you. Like that doesn't happen in other places in the world. So um, freedom means for me being able to sell coffee and support pregnancy centers. Awesome, Anton. Well, once again, everyone, Seven Weeks Coffee, sevenweekscoffee.com, right, Anton? That's correct. Yep. Get your bag today. It's delicious. <laughs> or multiple bags. Get the whole <laughs> get the whole thing. Um, Anton, thank you so much for coming on this morning. Uh, God bless you and your and the work that you're doing, you and your wife. And uh, if you're ever in New York, come up to the farm. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. We We'd drive through here once in a while. That'd actually be fun. I will have to put that on you'll, my radar. You'll get a kick out of it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fun. Wonderful. Thank Thanks for having Thank me. You. I really appreciate yeah, God it. God bless. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.